What do you want? Where's Blue? Show me Blue. You know where he's at. You saw him. Where's Blue? Do you want to get him? She's purposely avoiding because he's right here. Good wait, Blue. You found him. Thank you. See how the eyes dart away. That is her being anxious. I bet you her blood pressure's up. I bet you she's a little excited because it's blue. It's somebody that she plays rough with. And the door's open, so she's not in, she doesn't know what to expect with him. So now she's going to investigate what she can do. Good, leave it. Now watch how she and I are going to handle this. You ready? So you're not going to get calm. Like, so she looks calm, but I'll bet you. Now she's looking for ways to de-stress. See how she gets excited since that door closed? Oh, I don't know if we can get your ball. Ah, oh, this is going to happen a little bit later than I thought. You see it? So that anxiety. So we're assuming anxiety is always a negative thing. It's not. Did <laughs> you disappeared? You got it. So now we're going to de-stress and play rough. See? Oh, you got it. Yeah. I don't think one thing Bailey doesn't understand, doesn't get is that Belle's out here laying on her bed that I left out yesterday to clean off, let the sun disinfect anything. Yeah. See that excitement? See how she's choking? That's the excitement. Just because she didn't act out with blue there doesn't mean she wasn't anticipating anything. Doesn't mean her anxiety wasn't up. Doesn't The anxiety, stress has three levels. One is the one, the anxiety that helps you focus and gather all the information so you can complete a task. So you can seek help when you need it. Your second one is your chronic stress. So if your first needs are not met, you couldn't fulfill it, you're like worried about a threat and you don't get that threat taken care of, or worse, something bad happens, then your body's going to remember that because it happened in a dramatic fashion and build up anxiety faster. Your body's gonna raise its blood pressure. Your brain's gonna release chemicals to get ready to fight or flight because now they think it's a threat. And if you don't take care of that need, reconvince your, your reconvince your brain rethink your thoughts because anxiety makes it happen but your brain validates why you feel anxious excuse me let me back up your emotional regulations is in your prefrontal cortex your emotional systems are in the ancient part of your brain to help you feel the need to be anxious that's in your limbic system that's your amygdala and all those other little fun aspects of your brain Thank you. Give it to me. <laughs> so when they work together, when you're starting to feel anxious, you have a red level of excitement. When you have that regular uh, 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 excitement going on, think about what happens. Your blood pressure rises. You're anticipating. You're waiting. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? If you anticipate something negative, like your brain decides to say, or your prefrontal cortex, your reasoning decides to say, Last time I was here, something bad happened. I'm going to anticipate something bad happening every single time. You change the thoughts of, well, if I'm excited, if I'm anxious, I'm going to change that excitement level and focus on, I'm going to go see my best friend today. Ooh, I get to go for a road trip this weekend. Ooh, that's going to be fun. You make it to something you're looking forward to because that's what anxiety is. Something you're looking forward to. Whether it's, and I just mean forward as in going forward, not positive. Because in, with anxiety, it can go either way, positive or negative. In your brain, depending on what, how you look at it. So anxiety is something you're looking forward to the future with. You can change it if you're nervous, excited. You're anticipating something bad that might possibly happen. Your prefrontal cortex will say... I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. 
So I need to make sure nothing bad happens. So we're going to run away. Keep doing that often enough, you're going to live in a state of anxiety. That's chronic stress. That's where people have anxiety issues. And 80% of Americans have anxiety issues. More anxiety issues than depression. More anxiety issues than phobias or fears. Why is that? Because anxiety actually plays a role for you to live healthy and have emotional regulations. It's how we think about it that makes it bad. The third part of stress is a traumatic kind where you have no choice but to fight for survival. I see what happens a lot with dogs is while they're in a good mood playing around all this other stuff, being happy or trying to be joyous or trying to share stuff with you or with another dog usually, and that dog overcorrects. That dog snaps at him and attacks him. So if you think about it, if you're playing and you're enjoying life and something negative happens to you, you're going to be traumatized. Because you're at your most happiest time in the world. Your brain's receiving rewards. You're learning social cues. Your cognitive function's working. Your brain's just having fun, lighting up like a Christmas tree with rewards. Then something negative happens to you very shockingly, very suddenly. That's a traumatic experience. It only has to happen once. Now your anxiety is going to increase. You're not going to feel free to express yourself. The last two stressors will negatively affect your body. You'll get chronic illnesses. Once you have chronic illnesses, you're focusing more on pain. You start to isolate yourself. You change the way you kind of think about it. You take care of your mental health. You get your emotional needs met, meaning you find a friend and you use talk therapy. Dogs will use play therapy. Ow, that hurt. Play therapy to de-stress themselves. Play therapy is great for helping with trauma because it helps unsuppress an emotional system. Yeah, huh, Bailey? You're excited. All right, we're going to do the last one soon. I want you to get water because we're getting all dirty and muddy, so I know that's going into your face. So like I said, anxiety is good when your needs are met. It helps you stay alive. It's that thing when you walk to the edge of a cliff and you push yourself and go, oh, I can do it. And as you look over the edge of the cliff that looks like a cliff and you realize, oh, it's just a rolling hill. I thought it was a sudden drop off. That's the one that helps you seek to be curious about your life, about the world around you. Once you're able to accomplish a goal, you get excited. Anxiety and excitement are very similar in what happens going on in your brain and your, and your body. That's why usually after an exciting thing happens, you laugh it off or you joke around with your friends. If you're not with somebody, you're less likely to actually laugh it off. You may go, oh, that's funny. And that's it. Then you recall the events over and over again. And that starts to make you think that you being anxious was actually more dangerous than what it was. I'm going to end this now. So anxiety is good. There's three different forms of stressors. Each one more dramatic than the last. I wish I could remember the guy that came up with that. He just died recently too, like within the last month or two. Um, But it's not good stress and just bad stress. Good stress is what helps you build resilience. Good stress, you can take a bad situation and help the animal feel safe. That is good stress because now they're learning to get over it and get through it. Yeah, I'm, that's a whole other wormhole I don't want to go down right now. So this is Scott with Second and one Canine Life Coaching. Take care of emotional needs, not just for your dog, but for you as well because your chronic stress is actually proven to negatively affect your dog's emotional health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you live an anxious lifestyle, your dog's going to be more anxious too. Did you get your water? Bailey, you want to cuddle? No. Thank you. (laughs) Gentle. You going to bark at me? Do it. (laughs) Yeah, is that how you want to play? Yeah. Now get you your ball. Last one. 
so she's not fully done. That was anxiety right there. Her anticipating something fun, and this is me help. Ooh, sorry, Bailey. This is me helping her take care of it by being social with me. So we may think of anxiety as something negative, but research is showing it's actually good for you because it helps you seek out help. It helps you ask for help. It helps you be, want to be social to get your needs taken care of on things that you cannot do yourself. We are designed to be social creatures. We are designed to not just enjoy each other for fun, but also enjoy each other through stress. Help each other out. Someone feels bad, you don't have to fix it. Talk therapy, we talk it out, we discuss it, you name what makes you feel better, what's upsetting you. It works. Effective neuroscience, neuroscience, social neuroscience, psychologists, all these people are talking about it. This is Scott with Effective Dog Behavior, talking about anxiety and how it's beneficial. Go ahead, have a great day.